try so hard to fix all the things I've done Every mistake, every disaster When I'm running away, love's running I run away, love's running faster Every mistake, every disaster When I run away, love's running faster Every mistake, every disaster When I run away Good morning and welcome to Harbour Church. It is great to be here with you this morning. Great to have you in the room with us this morning. Quite a few people here. Um, you can give us a cheer if you want. Let people know that you're here. Oh, fantastic. And it's great to be with you at home um, via the wonders of the internet. Uh, we hope you're going to have a really great time in the presence of the Lord this morning. We're expecting to. It's, it's great to be expectant, isn't it, when you come to church? You know, we come here to meet with Almighty God, and that's what we want to do this morning. Whether you're at home, whether you're here, is meet with Almighty God. Let God touch your lives, let Him touch your heart, and transform who you are and how you are. You know, this week has been quite a week, actually. Um, there have been all sorts of changes going on. Um, lockdown has been eased a bit, so things are getting a bit easier. We're, we've finally been told that we can leave home and go out and do all sorts of things. Um, but sometimes that's not quite as easy as, as you'd think because we've got used to being at home and the, the new normal is staying at home. Um, well, I just want to read something this morning. There was a guy called Paul, you know Paul and Silas. They were in prison not through their own fault, but they got put in prison um, because of preaching the gospel. And they were tied up or bound up with chains, and it says in Acts 18, verse, verse 16, or, or 25 rather, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, so what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved you and your household. 
Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them out in brought them into his house and set a mill before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. You know, that's the key word, had come to believe in God. You know, we need to believe God. So often, prisons can come in all sorts of different shapes and forms. You know, we, we think of a prison being with bars and all the rest of it, but there are so many things that keep us bound in life. You know, there are, there are things like um, hurt, offences, unforgiveness, fear, sin, regret. All sorts of things can keep us bound up like we're in prison. But you know, Paul and Silas had the right idea. In the midst of their troubles, they got to praising God. They got to worshipping Almighty God, the one that can change your situation. They were praying and singing hymns of praise. That's what the word says. And you know, what happens when you do that in the midst of your troubles? God just loves to get into the party. He just loves to join with you. And you know, no prison is big enough to contain God. So something has to give. And, and Paul and Silas were set free. And I just want to tell you this morning, whatever is binding you, if there's something binding you up, whether it's unforgiveness, whether it's fear, whether it's sin, just start praising God in spite of your problems, not because of your problems, but in spite of your problems, get your eyes upon Jesus, worship him, and see what he will do as you put your trust in him. Paul and Silas did it, and the result was this man and his whole household got saved, and they were set free. Who knows what will happen in your life if you just dare to trust him? Don't see problems see Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for what you've done for each one of us. Lord, we just thank you that you have set us free. Your word tells us that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And Lord, that is what we want to do this morning. We want to worship you and walk and dance and live in freedom, Lord, because you have set us free. Father, we just commit this service to you and ask that you will have your way in this service, Lord, that you will touch people's lives this morning, Lord, as we worship you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. darkness you have filled me with peace giver of mercy you're my help in time but I can't help but sing faithful you are faithful
the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy. Is the Lamb who was slain? Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy.
line that just keeps jumping out of me is who was and is and is to come. And you know you can put anything in front of that line. God is good. He was, he is, and he is to come. His faithfulness, it was, it is, and it is to come. His mercy, his mercy was, it is, and it is to come. His grace was, it is now, it is to come. scripture here to you. It's 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. And it says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you do it. Drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You know, and it's that word, do this in remembrance of me. You know, we need to actually ponder that a little bit, stop and think about it, because, you know, sometimes we can just rush through communion and, yep, we've done it again, but actually we don't really stop and think what it's all about. You know, and I'm not just talking about the Last Supper, and I'm not just talking about the crucifixion or the resurrection, that's part of it. But what I'm talking about is remember Remember what you were before you met Jesus. You know, I stop and think about this quite often. I was thinking about it this morning before I came to church. I was thinking about it the other morning in my prayer time. And I stopped and I thought, and I, so often I'm stopping and thinking and thinking, God, you have made such a difference in my life. It's all because of you, Lord. I know what I was before I was a Christian. And I'm not perfect now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. But I know that I'm not what I was. I'm on that journey with Jesus, and he's changing me daily. And I want to remember that all that is within me that is good is because of him. I want to give him glory this morning. As I take the bread and the juice, I want to remember that it's all about what he's done in my life. And he's, it's all about what he's done in your life. And maybe if you haven't asked Jesus into your life yet, this is a great opportunity and say, Jesus, I might not understand exactly what I'm doing, but I need you in my life. Would you come into my life? And will you change me? And will you give me a great life? Because I can tell you that is the life that you have with Jesus Christ. So this morning as we take this bread, going to break the bread and you can take it at home and we remember what Jesus has done for each one of us and it's personal he has changed my life transformed it thank you Jesus take the juice let's give him thanks from our hearts Jesus we just thank you for this bread and this juice but more than that we thank you for who you are and for all that you've done for us we give you the glory that our lives have been transformed because of you
Make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. Amen. Amen. Let's say amen to that day. Praise God. Thank you, guys. That was fantastic. Well done. Well, this morning, um, Mary Jane is our preacher. Um, she's just getting herself ready. Um, I'm sure she's got an amazing story to tell us this morning. <laughs> Shaking her head. Right. Let's just pray for her. Father, we just pray for Mary Jane as she comes and, and shares your word, Lord. Father, would you just anoint her and equip her, Lord, with this word? Would you just help her to, to just speak life to us, Lord? Help her to be listening to what you want to say and just let it flow into our hearts, Lord. And let us be open to receive your word, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Tim. Good morning, everyone. Oh, thanks. There's a few there. Good morning, everyone. Yay. Good morning if you're joining us at home as well. Um, I have actually got a story that I'm going to share at the beginning today. And... Um, I just want to tell you a little story um, from when I was a lot younger. Um, this took place when I was in year seven of secondary school, so 11 years old. And um, the story is, now lots of you know from looking at me that I am not particularly tall. I have not inherited any tall genes, unfortunately. And when I was in year seven, we had this one day where we were all sat in the school hall, 1,000 girls can't remember what the assembly was about, but we were sat there in the hall, a teacher was talking about something, and for some reason they said that they were interested to know who might be the shortest, the smallest girl in the whole school. And you might have figured it out. Mm -hmm. Everyone around me, all my friends, Mary Jane, that's you, Mary Jane, that's you. My teachers started going, come on, stand up. I had to stand up in front of the whole school, 1,000 girls, as being the shortest in the whole school. And the, all of these girls just went, ah, oh, and she cute? And from then on, every time I walked through the corridor, all these older girls would just go, oh, and she cute? Do you know what? It was the most embarrassing moment of my life. It's a story I remember vividly. I cannot remember what the assembly is about, but I do remember having to stand up as the shortest. And even at secondary school, when we had school photos, we'd be in the field and they'd have one of these big tiered stands. You'd have to go in height order. So, of course, that meant little old me, I was the shortest. I had to then stand in the top left corner of this massive tiered stand because it went from shortest to tallest along. Um, there was one other girl in the years, though, that I think we kind of switched over every now and then. Sometimes she was shorter than me, and sometimes it was me, but most of the time it was me. But um, a little story, do you know, of a memory of mine of being measured up against everybody else in terms of height. And this morning, I want to talk to us about measuring up. In that case, it was physically but there might be other ways that we measure up. And I want us to really address this whole area of measuring up. And when you look in a dictionary definition of what measuring up means, it says here, measuring up, to compare the qualities of a particular person or thing with those of someone or something else. Another definition says this, to be good enough or as good as someone or something else. You know, measuring up is when we try 
to reach what others are. We try to reach maybe what others say we should be. We start to put our lives alongside each other, and that might be in a physical sense. My life in terms of height was put alongside the others, but it might be that we put our lives alongside each other in terms of character, in terms of personality. So this morning, my first question is, what or who are you finding that you're trying to measure up to? What or who do you find yourself trying to measure up to? Are you trying to measure up to your work colleagues? <laughs> is it school friends? Is it social media that you're trying to measure up to? Is it what the world says you're to be? Maybe you're trying to measure up to words that have been spoken over you by others. Maybe actually you're trying to measure up to something that you've said of yourself. <laughs> you're trying to measure up to your own standard. I don't know about you, but I know I find myself doing this. I reckon it's something that lots of us find ourselves in this battle of measuring up to others. And the thing is, when we start to do that, it brings this comparison, doesn't it? And you know, comparison then can, this whole thing can make us feel a sense of failure. We can often find ourselves feeling that we don't measure up. We find ourselves feeling, well, I'm not as good as this person. We end up finding it brings, measuring up brings disappointment. It brings jealousy. It brings bitterness. It can cause division. It can cause rivalry. Do you know, measuring up's not a good thing. And it's not what God wants for us. It is not what he wants for us. He does not want us measuring our lives up against each other. Do you know, even in 2 Corinthians, Paul warns against this. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12 says this. It says, he said, when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. <laughs> this is not a wise thing. This is not a good thing. Do you know it says in God's word that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Each one of us is precious to him. We are his treasure. Did you know that? You are his treasure. God doesn't want us to be measuring up against each other, but instead he longs for us, each one of us, to be in a relationship with him. He longs for us to discover who we are in him. He wants us to love each other, not be in this place of measuring up. I want to read a, a verse that I reckon lots of us would be familiar with. Romans, if you've got Bibles, you might want to turn to it. It will come up on the screen. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And it says this, for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Wow, that's something, isn't it? Do you know we don't even measure up to God? And we can't. We all fall short of God's standard. Yet, always love those words, yet. Yet God freely and graciously declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. Do you know, because of God's grace, we don't need to try to measure up. We don't need to try to measure up to him. We don't need to try to measure up to each other. We don't need to do that because of God's grace, because of Jesus. Do you know what? Instead, all we have to do, believe in Jesus. We need to believe in Jesus. And the first thing, this is the first thing I want us to grasp this morning about this whole idea of measuring up is that God is not looking for people who measure up, but he's looking for people who will believe and trust in Jesus. I'm going to say that again. God is not looking for people who measure up, but people who will believe and trust in Jesus. That's the first thing for us to get this morning. And yet, 
We so often find ourselves in this place, don't we? Maybe it's just me. (laughs) I don't know. But we often find ourselves in this place of trying to measure up, comparing our lives. In a moment, it can just happen, can't it? Without us realizing. You could be scrolling through Facebook and, oh, bam, there I am measuring up. You can watch something on TV. You measure up. You're out with friends. You measure up. It happens. And I think it's something that we all battle with. (laughs) And so this morning, what I want us to do is... I've got three thoughts, three thoughts of things that might just help, help us today, help us to shift from this place of measuring up into a place where God wants us to be, a place from measuring up into where God wants us to be. So my first thing to try and overcome this battle of measuring up, my first thing is this, stop measuring up and start fixing our eyes up onto Jesus. Stop measuring up and start fixing our eyes up onto Jesus. Do you know when we measure up to others, our eyes are on them. When we're spending time measuring up to our own standard, our eyes are on us. We need to shift our focus. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. That's where our eyes need to be. Fix our eyes on Jesus. I want to read some verses from, oh, where am I going to? Hebrews. Lots of jumping around today if you've got Bibles, so I hope you keep up. Hebrews chapter 12 has these great verses. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance, the race God has set before us. And this is the bit. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. What an amazing verse. We've got a note here. It doesn't say here, run your race. You're going to do this by keeping your eyes on everyone else around you. It doesn't say here, run your race and you're going to do this by trying to measure up to everybody else. You've got to keep your eyes on everybody else and you've got to measure up to them. That's not what you're saying. We're to run the race that God has set for us by keeping our eyes on Jesus. It says here too that he initiates and perfects our faith. In other versions, it says that he's the author. He's the author of our faith. Jesus is the one that begins our faith and he completes our faith. Do you know it also says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19, it says this, May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. It is in Jesus that we will become complete, not by measuring up against everybody else around us, not by comparing ourselves to everybody else. That is not going to make us complete. It is Jesus that makes us complete. He is the one that's going to give us life to the full. He said that, didn't he? I have come that you may have life and life to the full. Do you know, we are invited into a relationship with Jesus. Jesus described himself as the vine, that great passage in John. And he talks about him being the vine and we're the branches. And in that passage, he says that we are to abide in him. We're to remain in him. That means we need to stick close to him. So this morning I'm saying, if we want to overcome this battle of measuring up with others, we need to stick close to Jesus. We need to abide in him. We need to remain in him. We need to stick close to him. You know, I'm sure many of us will find when you hang out with someone for a long time and you spend a lot of time together, you rub off on each other, don't you? You find yourselves saying the same things as each other. You pick up each other's phrases. You pick up each other's behaviors, the things that they do. Well, you know, we, we've got to be like that with Jesus. We want to stick close to him, hang out with him, spend time with him so that he rubs off on us. So that we then behave the way that he behaves. And we think then the way that he thinks. 
I always love that verse in Romans 12 where it says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. We need to change the way we think. And we can only do that by sticking close with Jesus. We can only do that by fixing our eyes on him. So the first thing, keep your eyes fixed Keep your eyes fixed up onto Jesus. Okay, the second thing. Stop measuring up and start soaking up the Word of God. Stop measuring up and start soaking up the Word of God. This here is what's going to help us in this area of measuring up. It's in here that we will find the truth, the truth of who God says we are, the truth of who we are in Christ. You know, when we're measuring up, we're trying to measure up to like what others say, what the world says, what the past says, what we say, whereas actually, do you know what matters is what God says. That's the only voice that matters here. What does he say? God wants us to discover who he says we are. And we can find it all in here. Do you know in here it tells me that I am a child of God? That's what he says of you. Do you know that? It says in here I'm free. It says I am forgiven. It says I am accepted. It says I am chosen. I am significant. I am loved. And I'm sure you could keep going with the list. That is what he says about you and me. And we are all those things because of Jesus. Do you know, I don't know about you, but when I spend time reading the Word, sometimes it feels like I'm having like a big, long drink. You know when you just have a drink and you're so thirsty and it's really refreshing? I feel like I'm literally taking that drink and it's giving me life. In Psalm 119, there's lots of references to God's word in there. I'm not going to read the psalm. It's the longest psalm, so don't panic. I'm not going to read it. It's too long. But go and have a look. There's so many verses in there that describes what his word does. It says that it revives us. His word encourages us. His word stands firm. It gives life. It says, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. It says that his words are sweet like honey. Talks about having his word hidden in our hearts. I love that verse. Do you know this is the best thing that you can be reading? Sometimes the problem when we're measuring up is that we're reading the wrong thing and we read things that actually just feed that that comparison. We need to be reading this. You know, I came across a new term this, a few weeks ago of how to make a cup of tea. I don't know if we've got any tea drinkers. Any tea drinkers? I'm an avid tea drinker. I still can't quite keep up with my dad. Um, he drinks far too much tea. I can't keep up with him. But, you know, I've, I've heard often, you know, you talk about brewing your cup of tea. But a few weeks ago, I heard about the term steeping a tea bag. I don't know. I'd never heard this before. Has anybody ever heard of this term before, steeping also, a few people, I'm glad that some people are maybe with me. I hadn't heard about this before, about steeping a tea bag. And in order to make a good cup of tea, you need to steep your tea bag. And in terms of what that means, I'm going to read a few things out. So it means steeping. You must let the water get into the bag so that what is in the bag can flavor the water. In its most basic terms, basically it's soaking. You've got to soak the tea bag in the liquid. To soak in a liquid so that you extract the essence by soaking. You need to steep the tea bag. Now, I am with you in there. You can't do a dip in and out. Okay, that's not a cup of tea. I can see a few people shaking their heads at me. Uh, okay, a dip in and out, there's no time for soaking. There's no steeping. Nothing is going to come out of that bag into that water. It's not going to happen. You're not going to extract anything. You've got to let that tea bag steep. Now, I just have a little look. There are certain times, there's quite a science about this, about certain types of tea and how long you should steep it for, but haven't got a clue what they are. However, I love this 
this little picture because, you know, in the same way, we need to be steeped in God's word. We need to be steeped in God's word. This means we've got to soak up his word. No, just dip in and out. We've just said that with tea bag. You dip in and out, doesn't even touch the water. You're not going to get anything. In the same way, you can't just dip in and out of God's word. There's no time then for it to soak. We're not going to extract anything. We've got to steep in his word. That means we've got to sit. We've got to read it. We've got to allow it to just soak into our hearts. If we're steeped in his word, we're going to be like that water that washes in, grabs it all, and that water is changed. Our lives will become changed. We will then extract the essence of God into our lives. That's where our lives will become transformed. We'll be able to extract the truth of his word. We'll be able to extract his goodness so that it permeates in our lives. So that the word becomes, like David said in the Psalms, hidden in my heart. That's how I'm going to get this hidden in my heart. I need to be steeped in God's word. I've got to be soaking up his word. And if I do that, then when I'm in those moments... (laughs) where I find myself trying to measure up, I can grab hold of this. And I can go, no, I know. I know what he says. I know what it says in here. So our second thing, to soak up the word of God. And our third and final thing, stop measuring up and start being filled up with the Holy Spirit. Stop measuring up and start being filled up with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to turn to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. Let me just find it. Verse 25 says this. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Do you know, in the NIV version, it says, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Since we're living by the Spirit, we've got to be living by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, in step with the Spirit. Early in verse 16, in this same chapter, it says, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Do you know, we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit lives in us, leading us, enabling us to be who God wants to be. It's by the Holy Spirit that I can overcome having to measure up to others. We are to be led and filled by the Holy Spirit. You know, when we are led by the Holy Spirit, then what appears in our lives is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's what will appear when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, when we're being led by the Holy Spirit. If I want the fruit of love, joy and peace, I need to step, keep in step with the Holy Spirit. You know, when we measure up to each other, as we talked earlier, didn't we, that actually the fruit of that, that's not love, joy, peace. <laughs> The fruit of measuring up is jealousy and bitterness, comparison, disappointment, feeling of failure. We want to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Another verse in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. This great verse says this. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Do you know I love, Tim, that you opened this morning. We're just talking about freedom and being free, which is exactly what this is about. The Holy Spirit brings us freedom. The Holy Spirit brings us freedom for so many things. But this morning in particular, I want us to just think about how the Holy Spirit can bring us freedom from having to measure up, having to feel like we have to measure up.
Do you know, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, So Christ has truly set us free. Do you know, in Galatians chapter 5, Paul writes a lot here about freedom in Christ and living by the Spirit. And I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but you might want to go away and have a look at it. I'm going to read a couple of other verses of what it says in here. Verses 13 to 15 in chapter 5 says this, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. Do you know what I think is that when we measure up and we compare, that's what we're at risk of doing, destroying one another. We're actually called to love your neighbor and to live in freedom. Love is the first fruit. If we're led by the Spirit, we will be led into freedom by the Holy Spirit. We will be able to love one another rather than measure up to one another instead, which just causes the jealousy and the bitterness. So, you know, we need to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. We need to daily daily invite the Holy Spirit to come and live in us, to dwell in us. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to fill us, guide us, lead us. It's the Holy Spirit at work within us that will bring us freedom from measuring up. It's the Holy Spirit at work within us that will enable us to love each other rather than measure up against each other. It's the Holy Spirit at work within us that will enable us to fully enter into all that God has for us and longs for us. So stop measuring up and start being filled up with the Holy Spirit. Three things this morning. Three things that I hope might just help some of us to overcome this battle. Do you know, God doesn't want us to be focused on measuring up. Right at the beginning, we heard already, we don't measure up. And he sent Jesus to die for us. What have we got to do? We've got to believe in him. He doesn't call us to measure up. He calls us to believe in him. But when you find yourself in those moments, comparison to others, comparing to others, trying to measure up, Find yourself saying, well, I'm not as good as them. I need to be like that. I need to be like that. Uh Uh-uh, you do not. And in those moments, let's start to look up and fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's soak up his word and what he says about us. And let's be filled up with the Holy Spirit. I wonder if we might. We're going to sing in a moment. We're going to sing this great song of Who You Say I Am. (laughs) Because it's declaring who he says we are, which is in here. I don't need to measure up. I'm a child of God. (laughs) I'm chosen. I'm accepted. I'm loved. And that's you too. (laughs) Don't sit there and think, it's not me though. It is for you. That's what he says for you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray over us and then we're going to sing this great song. Father God, I want to thank you this morning that you are not asking us to measure up. You don't want us to be people trying to measure up to something else. None of us measure up. And that's the beautiful thing of grace. God, I thank you for your grace that you sent Jesus to die for each one of us. And because of that, we know this morning who we are, that we are children of God, that we are chosen, that we're accepted, that we're forgiven. But God, I want to pray for each one of us. Father God, I pray that at the same time there's this battle, (laughs) this battle that many of us 
face of feeling we have to try to measure up. And Father God, I pray right now that with this battle, that you will just help us to keep our eyes fixed up on Jesus. Oh, may we keep our eyes fixed on you, Jesus. May we stick close to you. May we soak up your word. And may we daily be filled up with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you bring us freedom. Will you guide us, lead us, enable us to walk in who God says we are. Help us to a people, to be a people that will look up, soak up and be filled up. Amen. Sometimes, you know, we hear a great message and we go out the door and you think, what was that, that message? You know, and for whatever reason, we just forget it. 
and sometimes it's just good to check it out again and just keep watching it while the Lord's speaking to you through it and just let him really plant it into you. So I'd encourage you, you know, at home and here, watch the message during the week. On, it's probably on eBay or not eBay, on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube and, and Facebook. Yeah, we're going to sell Mary Jane's message on eBay. <laughs> She's going, going quickly. Right, anyway, a couple of quick announcements. Um, if you need to get in touch with us or want to get in touch with us, if you want to know anything about um, connect groups or anything else that we do in the church, um, the, there's the website coming up here, info um, at harbourchurch.co.uk, um, and you will be contacted with the answer to whatever your question is. Also, if, if you're wanting to give to the church, all our giving is online at the moment. Details will be found there. Um, so we also have um, a, a weekly news bulletin that comes out. Can I encourage you, if you haven't got your name down for that, to get your name on that? Because um, all sorts of things are going to be happening as we come out of lockdown. And, and it's a great way to be able to find out what's actually happening in the church. Um, in fact hopefully in the very near future we're going to start doing some outside worship because we can which will mean we can sing yeah whoa that could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing i don't know but um depends who's singing but we're going to be doing that weather dependent outside in the grounds um but you probably need to be informed by the newsletter or a text message so make sure that pete has all your details and then he can contact you um, right, I just want to pray for um, the family of Ivor Frost because um, he recently went home to be with the Lord and he's a friend of Paul's and Gareth's and Sarah's and um, I've just been asked if we can pray for the family. So let's just take a moment. Father, we just thank you that Ivor knows you, Lord. He knew you in, when he was on earth, but he knows you perfectly now. He's with you now, Lord, and Father, we thank you for that. Father, would you just, just comfort his family at this time, Lord. Just lift them up and remind them that he knew you, Lord, that he knows you, and that he's with you and alive forevermore. Father, just bring peace into that family, Lord. As I say, bring comfort and be their support, I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, also pray for the Queen that you would continue to comfort her in her loss and her family loss, Lord. Father, just, just draw them closer to you, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've got another quick announcement, which Mary Jane is going to bring to us. So, Am I on? Yes, brilliant. Okay, yes, we just thought we'd wrap up our service today because um, it's a couple of birthdays. We've got one actually today, my own son, Ethan. Happy birthday, Ethan. Let's give it a clap to Ethan. The grand old age of 12 older and wiser. Um, but there is also another birthday which is even more older and wiser. Um, and later in the week on Wednesday, the wonderful Gareth Webber turns, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it on, on a live stream, of course everyone knows, he's turning 50. Woo! Um, I know you're on the sound desk, Gareth, but maybe you might just pop up for a moment for us. Just going to be em embarrass you, I'm afraid. But um, Gareth turns 50 on Wednesday, and Gareth, we just want to take a moment today. In fact, I might just, whilst he's coming up, I'm just going to sort this out. Hold on. <laughs> just to really remind you, Gareth, do you know I'm going to put that just there for you. You've got to carry it around with you everywhere. I'll tie it on, you can tie it on your wrist, you know, like kids. No, I'm joking. Just mind you, don't disappear. Um, is that on the shot? I think you can just see. Gareth, we just want to take a moment on your birthday to just show how much we appreciate you. How you Gareth does so much, like genuinely so, so much. And we as a church family just want to take this moment to honour you, basically, Gareth. And thank you for who you are. And just to say how much we love you, we care for you, we appreciate you. Can we just give him a massive round of applause? <laughs> woo, 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 lots of cheering. Um, there's a little gift there for you. Um, to have, we're going to sing. I think maybe you should sing. Stay there whilst we sing. 
Is that all right? Am I making up your sound thing? We're going to sing to Gareth, we'll sing to Ethan, and we're going to wish them happy birthday. Thanks, Dave. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ethan and Gareth. And anybody else. Happy birthday to you. Now, this is coming to the end of our service, but, you know, normally we would have this place packed with all of our church family, and we can't physically all back to... Well, you might want to stay there, because then you can see the screen. Oh, do you need to do a sound bit? Oh, look, it's got to go do a sound bit. Well, Gareth, because we can't all physically be together to wish you a happy birthday, we've got a video um, to show you with some happy birthday messages from your... Your Harbour Church family just wanting to wish you a happy birthday. And this is going to be our end of our service. So we're going to end with um, this video. Gareth, this is for you. Happy birthday, Gareth. Happy 50th birthday, Gareth. And remember, I hope I look as good as you do when I get to your age. Bye. 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 Happy, Happy birthday. birthday, Gareth. Happy 60th, Gareth. No, well done. 50. I'm fi oh, sorry, Gareth. <laughs> Silly me. Happy uh, 50th, Gareth. And uh, I hope you have a lovely day. Have from, a wonderful day. From the Isdale. Celebrating Conference, your 50th. 50. God bless. 50? Two, three. Happy 50th birthday, Gareth. Yay! Yay! Happy birthday, Gareth. Thanks for all you do. Hope you had a great day. And thanks for seeing me on Lisa. <laughs> Bye. 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 Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Gareth. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Gareth. Happy birthday, Gareth. 50 years old. Yeah, five oh, big five oh. Hope you have a great, great time. Yeah. Lots of love to you. Bye. Bye. Hi, Gareth. Happy birthday. Many congratulations on your 50th. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Gareth. Happy Thank you for your faithful service to God and to us. We're so blessed to have you as a friend and as our pastor. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Gareth. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Gareth! Hope you have a great day. Happy birthday, Gareth! Happy birthday, Gareth! Should we say happy birthday? Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Because it's happy your birthday! birthday. <laughs> Bass playing, car revving, word spreading, motivating, hair clipping, veg growing, deep praying, study prepping, ever giving, young at 50. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Gareth! Oh, do you want me to do a countdown? Yeah. How? What, just say three, two, one, or do it on my fingers? Do it on your fingers. Can you see my fingers? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but now you're looking down. Oh, I just do three, two, one. Three, two, one. Hi, Happy Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're going to...
pressed up. No, we're just. Hi, Gareth, happy birthday. Okay, okay. up to three, two, one. Three, two, one. <laughs> Look, just cough, you need to cough. Three, no, I don't. Three, two, one. Hi, Hi Gareth, Gareth, happy birthday. birthday. Hope you have a great day, and 50 isn't old. Happy 50th birthday, Gareth. I trust that you'll keep on being built up in God's love and keep on teaching in God's love too. Happy 50th, mate. Happy birthday, Gareth. Hope you have a great day. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Okay, we better stop now because he doesn't like us singing it like a thousand times. We've already sung it a thousand times this week. Have a lovely birthday. We couldn't be more proud of you and love you very much. And happy birthday, Dad. <laughs> You're very old day. now. I was gonna say, they wanted to tell you how old you are. So, yeah, <laughs> you'll recognise where we are. We're away having a few days break to celebrate you and we're quickly filming this. So have a lovely day. A lovely birthday. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dad. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Well, happy birthday, Gareth. It's your 50th birthday. Um, and I had a quick look on the internet for the 21st of um, April. 1971 to see just what happened at that time. Um, Richard Nixon was President of America, Ted Heath was Prime Minister of England and absolutely nothing else happened. Um, your birth was the big event of the day um, and we just want to celebrate that with you and thank you for all you do for us and tell you how much we appreciate you and love you. Gareth, um, thank you so much. Hope you have a really happy birthday, and just remember, the best is yet to come. God bless you. Hi, Gareth. Happy birthday! It's your birthday! Woohoo! It's your birthday! Woohoo! Happy birthday, Gareth! Hi, Gareth. Happy. Happy birthday, Gareth. Happy birthday, Gareth. Happy birthday, Gareth. Happy birthday, Gareth. Hi, Gareth. It's your birthday. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Happy birthday, Gareth. Have a great day. See you Pastor Gareth. Hi, Gareth. Have a great birthday. Sarah's put your slippers by the fire and she's cooking your favourite meal. Have a good day. Bye. Happy 50th Gareth. Enjoy your day from all of us. Happy birthday Gareth. Hope you have a good nice birthday. day. Yeah, happy birthday Gareth. Another milestone mate, eh? A big 5-0. You don't look a day over 49. God bless you, mate, and here's to many more. Happy birthday, Happy mate! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy 50th birthday, Gareth. Or is it 21 again? With all our love and prayers from the ancient members of the Trust family. Lots of love and prayers. God bless. Happy birthday, Gareth. Congratulations on your half century. Best wishes for the next innings. Happy 50th birthday, Gareth. Time just flies by. It's 20 years this year since you married John and I. Have a great day. Lots of love. Morning. This is a message for you, Gareth. I just wanted to wish you a really happy 50th birthday. Can't quite believe we're 50. I don't know about you. Um, tempted to sing, um, thought about it and then thought against it. So I'll save you that pleasure. But yeah, here's wishing you a great day. Happy birthday and God bless you. Happy birthday Gareth, hope you have an amazing birthday and lots of fun celebrating with your family. Hi Gareth, 
congratulations on reaching the grand old age of 50. We hope you have a wonderful day um, and join yourself um, with your lovely family. Um, and hopefully see you in person soon um, in church at some point. So enjoy yourself. Make sure you eat lots of cake. That's your thing. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Happy birthday, Gareth. Happy birthday. I'm like, it's talk, I'm not gonna...